السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد الرسول حي على الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استن بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم ربيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما 
أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة My dear respected brothers in Islam as always, I begin by asking humbly that you turn off these electronic devices, cell phones, and pages which have a tendency to ring at the most inopportune time and disturb us during our ibadah. And I always humbly request, as always, that you open your ears, your minds, and your hearts to what I'm about to say. Al Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, has collected on the authority of a new man, Ibn Bashir. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam sallam قال مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم وتعاطفهم مثل الجسد الواحد إذا اشتكى منه قطو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what means the likeness of the believers in their mutual love, compassion, and concern is the like of a single body. If one limb feels pain, the rest of the body rallies together in its suffering through sleeplessness and fever. Method al-Mu'mineen the likeness of the believers. It was the Prophet's custom, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in teaching his companions to paint a picture for them, to provide practical examples of theoretical concepts, so that these concepts could be more readily understood, easily understood, and the intended meaning behind these concepts could be visualized. al mu'minin, the believers. In the context, the true believers. Those who have come full circle in terms of their faith. They are like this with their fellow believers simply because of their belief. Regardless of their color, race, ethnicity, or national origins. مثل المؤمنين في أي شيء The likeness of the believers in what thing exactly? في توادهم وتراحمهم وتعاطفهم The likeness of the believers in terms of their love, their mutual love, compassion, and concern. This sends the implicit message that loving the believers, having compassion for them, and being concerned about their well-being, all of these three are part of believing and a sign of true faith, while the opposite despising the believers, treating them heartlessly, and being indifferent towards their suffering. Although that doesn't make us disbelievers, it is an indication that we are lacking in faith, that we have not joined the fraternity of the faithful to the extent that Allah wants us to. We have not believed to the degree that Allah wants. مَثَلُ الْجَسْدِ الْوَاحِدِ The likeness of a single body. In another hadith, the Prophet, he said, الْمُؤْمِن لِلْمُؤْمِن كَالْبُنْيَانِ يَشُدُّ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا وَشَبَكَ بَيْنَ أَصَابِئِهِ He said the likeness, he said, one believer to another believer is like a solid structure. One part supports the other, and then he interlaced his fingers. Both of these two ahadith describe the extraordinary level of solidarity, cooperation, and affection that should exist 
in the Muslim community. إِذَا اشْتَكَ مِنْهُ أُضْغٌ تَدَاعَ لَهُ سَائِلُ الْجَسَدِ بِالسَّهْرِ وَالْحُمَّةِ If one limb feels pain, the rest of the body rallies together, sharing in its suffering through sleeplessness and fever. It means, brothers and sisters, that when our fellow believers experience success, happiness, victory, that doesn't make us sad. That doesn't make us envious jealous in a bad way. Rather, we rejoice in their triumph. What makes them happy makes us happy too. And if they encounter failure, misery, persecution, suffering, we don't find happiness in their agony. Rather, we agonize as if what happened to them happened to us as well. What makes them sad, makes us sad. And what hurts them, hurts us too. Al-Hafidh ibn Hajj rahim Allah ta'ala, he said, فِيهِ تَعْذِيمُ هُقُوقِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْحَثُّ عَلَى تَعَاوُنِهِمْ وَالْمُلَاطَفَةْ I'm sorry, وَالْمُلَاطَفَةْ بَعْضِهِمْ بَعْضًا He said, rahim Allah ta'ala, he said, the hadith magnifies the rights of Muslims and encourages cooperation and compassion amongst them, encourages the believers to cooperate with each other, to be a community, a real community in the real sense, and to have compassion for one another. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, in this hadith, our beloved Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم describes the relationship between the believers as it should be, not necessarily as it is. But he is indirectly, implicitly commissioning us to make this the reality. Brothers and sisters, there is so much craziness in the world today. Natural disasters, talking about earthquakes and wildfires and lethal storm systems. The global health crisis of COVID-19 talking about Muslims being persecuted because they are Muslims in places like China, and Burma, and India, and elsewhere. Talking about people being stripped, entire people, an entire group of people being stripped of their land, their identity, and their dignity in occupied Palestine. Talking about the worst humanitarian crisis in the world today in Yemen and talking about corruption and instability in most, or many at least, many of the countries that Muslims call home. Add to that, brothers and sisters, the personal problems that each, one of, each and every one of us faces. We've got these problems going on around us outside of our homes, and then we have our own problems in our homes, in our own personal lives. Could be unemployment financial difficulties, debts, illness, our own or that of a loved one, dysfunctional families, dysfunctional families, marital problems, and the list goes on and on and on. With all of this craziness in the world and in our own personal lives, it's easily possible, it's plausible, it might even be expected for depression and despair to set in, especially, brothers and sisters, if we feel that we have to face all of these things alone. And that is why applying these words of our beloved Prophet, مَثَلْ مُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِهِمْ وَتَعَطُفِهِمْ وَتَرَاهُمِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسْدِ الْوَاحِدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَ مِنْهُ عُضْوٌ تَدَاعَ لَهُ سَائِلُ الْجَسْدِ 
Sahri wa Humma applying these words is so important now more than ever before. We, brothers and sisters, we have to put our collective arms around each other. And we have to lend whatever support we can to each other, to our brothers here in the same community and our brothers outside of the community around the world who need our help. I realize, brothers and sisters, that COVID-19 has put a great deal of distance between us, literally and figuratively. It has made it difficult. It has made it, it has made being a closely knit community, it has made that very difficult, but it hasn't made it impossible. We have to try hard, we have to work even harder nowadays under the circumstances to live up to the standards set by the Prophet in this hadith, but we can live up to it. When we see each other, brothers and sisters, we encounter each other, whether in the masjid, practicing social distancing, or outside. We have to make it a point to ask each other, how are you doing? Is everything all right? Do you need anything? Is there anything that I can do? We have to make it a point to call each other, to email each other periodically, to check in. And if our brother or sister asks for our help, we should do whatever we can to help. This is the meaning. This is the practical implementation of, this, of these beautiful words, the likeness of the believers in terms of their love, their compassion, their concern, is the likeness of a single, a single body. If one part feels pain, the rest of the body rallies. It doesn't run away. It doesn't say, hey, that's your problem. It rallies to assist the other part of the body in sleeplessness and share in its pain through sleeplessness and fever. Before we pray, I want to mention three things out of Ujala briefly, quickly. The first one is that tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, is the 10th of Muharram, Yom Ashura. And it's highly recommended for the Muslims who are able to do so to fast on Yom Ashura because of the great reward the Prophet promised for those who fast. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Siyamu Yom Ashura, Ahtasibu ala Allah, and Yukafir as-salat al-lati qablahu. He said, for fasting the day of Ashura, I expect that Allah will expiate the sins of the previous year. An entire year's sins, the entire slate, wiped clean. The sins expunged from the record if we fast one day. Second thing I want to mention is I want to thank the outgoing board. As you all know, a couple weeks back there was some elections and a new board, a new administration was voted in. And that means that the other administration, the previous one, will leave political life and return to civilian life. They'll be just like us, regular people, inshallah ta'ala. But they shouldn't leave those posts without being thanked. Because the Prophet said, Men lam yashkur an-nas, lam yashkur Allah. Whoever doesn't thank the people properly has not properly thanked Allah. And there's no question that these brothers and one sister they worked for the masjid, they served the masjid, and serving the masjid requires a great deal of sacrifice and a great deal of work that many of us don't see. But we do reap the benefits. And so it's only appropriate that we thank them. And we do thank them. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them immensely for the service, and we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this expression of gratitude from us. Last but not least, I want to welcome the new board. And I want to welcome them and remind them of the responsibility, the tremendous responsibility they have assumed. I want to remind them first that this is Allah's house. And therefore their leadership, their running of Allah's house, should be in accordance with His teachings and values. His house, it should be run His way. Also want to remind them of one of the most important pieces of advice that any person can give another. To fear Allah. Fear Allah in their efforts, 
their endeavors, their decisions, and so on. Because if they fear Allah, Allah will make a way out for them from every difficulty. And He will provide for them in ways they can never imagine. And if they fear Allah, you saw. He will make all of their affairs easy. Last but not least, I want to pray for them. Pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them. Guides them to lead this masjid in a way that earns them Allah's pardon, His pleasure, and His paradise. Amin, amin, ya Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak, wa nabi Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa jamaeen, wa sallam wa sallam
ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة فجعلهم كعصف مأكول الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum everyone. I just want to make a few announcements. So this year, inshallah, the uh, Islamic Sunday School, it will be going virtual, like a lot of things. So um, if you check our website later this evening, you'll see links there for registration for your children, as well as registration for teachers. Now, um, this school can't be possible without teachers, so please parents, we encourage you as much as you can to volunteer, to teach this year. The more teachers we have, the more effective the classes will be. The less teachers we have, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to decrease the amount of students we can have enrolled. So it really depends on how many um, parents we have um, as teachers. So please look forward to that later this evening on the website. And also just as a reminder, um, regarding the plastic bags, I see a lot of you did bring the bags today. Jazakallah khair. Those who forgot, I understand it was the first week that we started this, but please try to bring your own um, plastic bag or any other sort of bag to um, carry your shoes, just to eliminate waste. And uh, also be aware that we will send another email um, later on regarding the Jumma guidelines, we're gonna update them so everyone is aware of the guidelines. And if they are not aware, please forward that email to them, whoever amongst your families and friends. Jazakallah khair. How's everything? Allah yibarak fiqh, Allah yitqabbar.